Today, we are going to check out the only HomeKit secure video doorbell in the world, the Robin. Let's check it out. Welcome back, friends. If this is your first time here, my name is Eric. If you're in the smart home, home automation, and especially HomeKit, you're definitely in the right place. Today's video is a part of my HomeKit series, so if you're into HomeKit, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. For full disclosure, Robin did send this out to me for a full honest review, but that's not gonna sway my opinion in one way or another. If I don't like something, I'm definitely gonna let you know. Now, if you're a HomeKit fan, like I am, you know how desperate we are for a great HomeKit doorbell. Actually, there are only three certified doorbells on the market today for HomeKit, two of which we now looked at on this channel. One's gonna be the Robin, and the other one is the Yobi. Third one, which hasn't made it to this channel yet, is the Tatmo. It's only, I believe it's only in the UK, which my friend John from HomeKit Authority, he checked that one out. Out and he his video can um, right up there if you guys want to check out that in the tat mode but does not have home kit secure video this is the only one that does now this product is not for most people these elephants I'm about to talk about I'm going to let you know ahead of time of the review that way you don't have to stick around and um, wait for my final opinions you guys know about these ahead of time but if you do want to stick around get a drink hope you watch the entire thing it really helps me out helps the channel that way I can bring other home home kit content to you. First huge elephant in the room is the price. This thing is not cheap. Most smart home doorbells, home kit, non, not home kit, doesn't matter. Most expensive one is probably around $250, $300. That is probably the top of the range. Well, this bad boy, this thing comes in at almost $700 US, which I'll put a couple conversions down here just in case you're watching this from other countries. Now I did ask my contact at Robin, why is it so expensive? And this is what they had to say. We're aware of the fact that the price tag for a HomeKit enabled pro line is different than the price tag for HomeKit video doorbells from other suppliers. That is mainly because our product is not comparable with these other products offered by other brands. The dimensions and materials used to build our products are just different. And they go into a list of different properties of their doorbell. So with all that being said, I do agree their build quality is top notch. It is all aluminum. It feels great in the hand. It feels solid. It's not a piece of junk. It really isn't. Now, with also being said, at $700, this is totally not worth it in my personal opinion. But it's also my opinion that you're paying this price because it's the only HomeKit secure video on the market. I hope when other HomeKit secure video doorbells come out, that price will come down. Now this build quality is definitely leading to my second huge elephant in the room, and that is the size. This is the compact version. There's actually a different version that is almost twice as tall. It's probably about just, a, I don't have it, so I'm assuming it's just about the same thickness or same width. But this is the compact version, which comes in at about 151 millimeters tall by about 95 millimeters wide. And that is with it being in the service mount box. You have to have a plan where you're gonna put this because it is much, much wider and taller than most doorbells and most people's area where they can have a doorbell. So you might have to move it to a different location to install this, which leads into my third huge elephant with this product, and that this is hardwired with ethernet. This is not a normal doorbell where you have two wires on the outside going to a transformer and going through um, what your house and going to your mechanical door chime. This has to have a ethernet cable to this doorbell. It's not Wi-Fi, it is hardwired ethernet. Actually, it's power over ethernet or PoE. But that's the PoE is not the hard part. The hard part is getting the ethernet wire to the door. So you do have to have a plan to really to install this ethernet wire at the door. You might have to get a professional to install this because it is quite difficult to run wires to your door. That is why I'm gonna say that this 
this product is not for most people, it is not for most homeowners, it is for high-end homes and businesses. This will look great in a business setting. Or when you have one of these big old intercom systems outside, you can probably take that out and put this in. Now I can't really tell you if that's gonna fit perfectly in that spot. You're going to run cables and so you're gonna to have to do some work anyways. But if you have that spot already, go ahead and remove that intercom and that is a great place for this. Since this is a PoE Ethernet cable connected device, you're definitely gonna have a solid connection to your network where if you if it was a Wi-Fi doorbell, sometimes you do have connection issues just because um, the Wi-Fi does have to go through the exterior wall which can be brick and other materials that can be a little bit more difficult. I know a lot of people that I've helped set up Wi-Fi doorbells, they actually have to move their router or get an extender closer to their doorbell. With this, you don't have that hassle of moving the Wi-Fi or um, losing connection. Unfortunately, you do have the hassle of installing that cable, but once it's there, you do have a solid connection. For the fourth elephant, <laughs> if I haven't launched it yet, is that there's no infrared lights on this camera. So if you don't have any door lights in front or you don't keep them on at night, unfortunately, you're not gonna see anything. For me though, I keep my outside lights on all night, have home kits off at sunrise, and then turn them off, um, turn them back on on the set. So for me, that's not an issue. Whew, those are some huge elephants, and if you're still here, thank you. I truly appreciate your support, and um, if you're still interested in this product, let's talk more about this now. This is the compact version. More than likely, this is the one that you're gonna go for, but if you do want something bigger, they do have something even even bigger than this. Comes in three different colors, the silver, the ox black, and the space gray. And I got the ox black, which will go great with my house. When it comes to the lens, it is a 720p camera sensor. I wish it was 1080, I wish it was 2K. Unfortunately, this came, I think they released this maybe two or three years ago, and that was the standard then. I do wish they would upgrade this camera to at least a 1080p. It does have a hardened elliptical glass dome will turn dark brown when exposed to sunlight and includes a UV filter to protect that sensor. Right below the camera is the microphone and the speaker. I gotta tell you, I was actually pretty impressed with the microphone speaker combination, which you can use in home kit or the home app, which is really, really cool. So you can talk to whoever's at the door. They can hear you just fine and you can hear them just fine. I was very pleased with the sound quality. Eric, Eric is the best. He's better than all the rest. All right, how do I sound? You sound good. Yeah. How do I look? You look like you. Oh, uh, my phone's ringing does come with a surface mount box, which is also built out of the anodized aluminum. I gotta tell you, this thing is rock solid. This thing is super heavy. Also comes with a Cat5 cable. This thing is about 20, 25 feet, I'm not quite sure. I personally had to extend mine. It's not a big deal, you can find Cat5 cable anywhere. This will have to be PoE or power over ethernet. If you are gonna plug this in to your router or your switch, no problem, you don't have to get any PoE switch because it does come with a power over ethernet ejector. Also, you just have to plug that into a standard outlet, plug it in your ethernet cables, and now you have PoE to the doorbell. Comes with all your mounting hardware that you'll need. Comes with this little piece of plastic for your name label. As you can see here, I customize it for modern day tech. They do sell it on their website. We can get it engraved professionally by them. I just took it to a local shop where I was able to get it done a little bit quicker and I was able to support a local business. Now, this nameplate is also where the actual doorbell is. This is that piezo call button that I was mentioning earlier. There are no moving mechanical parts so it's not going to get stuck during the hot summers or cold winters. Now when it came to insulation that is definitely one of the huge elephants in the room. Um, you will need a huge spot for this. If you can get into a old spot where you had like an intercom that is great. More than likely you're going to have to have a professional install the Cat5 wire unless you're very very handy with your hands. 
Now the Cat5 cable is gonna be plugging into your switch or your router, going into your PoE injector, and then going through your house, wherever you need to route it, or through your door frame, and then into the back of the device. Now the back of this device does not have an ethernet jack, which I thought was a little weird. You actually have to press in each wire, and they tell you the particular order. Um, it's pretty easy, but you, it does take a few minutes. You really have have to be particular which wire goes where. You're gonna have two spots left over where you can actually plug in a mechanical chime. So you have a mechanical chime doorbell that will work with this doorbell, which I thought was awesome. I tried it out, works well. So I actually have three mechanical chimes in my house and um, you don't need anything special. You just plug these two wires in to this doorbell and it will work. Once everything's all installed, there is a security screw at the bottom of the device that will prevent theft and anyone tampering with it. Now to set this up in HomeKit is super easy, just like any other HomeKit accessory. Hit the plus in the top right corner, scan the QR code which is on the back of the device. It's also in the instructions if you've already installed this. To assign this to a room, which I personally use front, you, know, you might have a different naming scheme. And then you want to get into some of the HomeKit secure video settings. And you have a couple settings for HomeKit secure video, which by the way, to get HomeKit secure video, you will need a Apple HomeKit hub, which can be a Apple TV, I think it's a fourth generation better, HomePod, or a iPad running as a home hub or set up as a home hub. You have to have one of those three things for HomeKit secure video, plus a subscription to iCloud of at least 200 gigs. If you have the 200 gig um, subscription, you can get one HomeKit secure video camera which records up to 10 days. And if you get the two terabyte plan, you can have up to five cameras and that is the maximum. There's no way to get more currently. I wish there was, but unfortunately, currently there is not. Next, you really want to figure out, do you want to stream this when you're home? Do you want to stream and record when you're home? You, um, you can make a selection here, but you can also change this later. And the same thing with away. Do you want to stream and record when you're away, or do you want to stream, or do you want it off? It's totally up to your preference. I like streaming and recording 24-7. Um, it's not constantly um, recording with HomeKit secure video is clip recording So it's only gonna record when it picks up motion um, Which we'll jump into some of those settings in just a moment and if you're asking why this is the only HomeKit secure video doorbell on the market I did ask the company that and they said they don't know why other companies decided not to support HomeKit secure video personally I think it's because it's You know what I mean. It is that simple. Also with HomeKit Secure Video, you're gonna have activity zones. That way you can draw out specific areas of the image that you want to get notified of motion in areas that you don't want to get notified. You can have as many areas that you want, but they cannot overlap. You're also going to get facial recognition. I did find it to work fairly well, but Comparing it to other HomeKit secure video cameras that I have in my house, which are indoor cameras, work a lot better for facial recognition. Don't know if it's because this was outside and the other ones were inside, but it didn't always recognize me. Sometimes it did and sometimes it didn't. When it comes to streaming and recording options, this is what you set up when you originally set up the camera. You can click on more options. You can have um, recording when it picks up any motion. But unfortunately with HomeKit Secure Video, when you have that on, you lose your activity zones. I'm not quite sure why that is. So I have it as specific motion for people, animals, and vehicles and record the audio. Um, doing so, I did find that it picks up 99% of the motion that I it you know that I noticed or when I tested it. Um, 
Every now and then I did get false alerts, but really wasn't that bad. You can also have automation, so if it picks up some motion in the camera, you can have it trigger another HomeKit item, maybe some lights. I don't recommend it only because there are things in the camera lens that can pick up that are moving like bugs, maybe trees, and it's gonna set off those automations even when you don't want them to. And when it comes to notifications, you have a bunch of options. You can definitely have it chime on your HomePods, like this. It looks like Eric is at the door. Um, if you have multiple home pods, you can have ring on all of them or just a specific one. You can also ring it on a Apple TV if you're watching. It actually pops up with the video footage and you can um, see who's at the door, which I thought was really, really cool. Also get a notification on your phone if you want to get notified, maybe at specific times. Also set up a time of when you get those notifications on the, your phone. So if you don't want to get notifications when you're at work, you can set that up ahead of time or maybe when only when people are at home you want to get a notification or when people are not home you want to get a notification on your phone all those settings are there for you to customize which I think are great and came to getting those notifications on my phone when I was on Wi-Fi it did come a little bit faster I would say on average it's probably about four to five seconds and when I was on LTE it's probably six to seven seconds to get that first notification now when you hit the notification um, to see who's at the door sometimes it went directly into the footage and sometimes it just took you to the home app I couldn't figure out why it took you sometimes it took you in and sometimes it didn't uh, it has something to do with the home app I've tried on Wi-Fi tried on LTE and I always got different results I wish Apple would come up with a way to make sure when you hit the notifications it takes you right in to the live feed especially if someone's at the door if I wanted to look back I can easily jump back into the the timeline but it's really it takes too long to jump from the timeline to to the live feed if something is going on. I also tested the refresh rate. Sometimes with HomeKit secure video, I got 10 seconds. Sometimes I got 30 seconds, which is much faster than a lot of other doorbells. And I kind of like that, but it can also be a little annoying and there's no customization. But now let's jump into some footage. Here it is during the day. It's not the best footage in my opinion. It is only 720p. It doesn't have the greatest field of vision, either vertical or horizontal in my opinion it is kind of subpar but it will get the job done you will be able to see who's at the door but if someone's far away you're not going to be able to tell who it is another thing I noticed with this footage is that there's a lot of dark areas there's a lot of bright areas even though you can adjust the brightness in the Robin mat there are just things that are going to be too dark and things that are too overexposed where other doorbells I tested on the market do have a high dynamic range lens and you can definitely see very close to you even if it's dark and you can also see far away from you even though it's too bright and you do get that perfect picture. You can adjust the brightness in the Robin app which changes the footage in the home app but unfortunately as you can see here as I'm changing it for closer things closer up to make it a little bit brighter it overexposes everything far away you can't see what's on the road and when it came to the night footage remember it does not have any night vision so you have to keep your lights on at night and it kind of has that same problem where the brightness could be too bright or too dark which you can adjust in the Robin app now jumping into the Robin app it does have a couple additional settings um, that you're not going to get in the home app one the speaker level which you can adjust in the home app but you can't adjust the microphone which you can hear you also have the push button settings so you can have the push button settings sensitivity I had it on the highest level it just seemed to work for me and then you can set how many times you want it to ring and the interval between the rings if you do have an external chime you can enable that here and set the ring time I did ask for questions on my community page and all my social media so hopefully I answered all your questions for you but if I didn't let me know down below and I'll definitely get those answered for you if you guys want to see more home kit products make 
make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. I do want to thank my Patreon members. These guys really mean a lot to me. They back this channel financially, even though they don't have to. They just like my content. They want to support the channel. They want to see more content. Um, if you guys want to learn more about becoming a Patreon member, check out my Patreon page right there. But if you can't do that right now, that's okay too. I just ask that you subscribe, hit that like button, watch my videos entirely. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And that that means more to me than becoming a Patreon member. Um, so I really appreciate you guys. If you're brand new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you guys want to see the next video on my home kit series, check that out right there. I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.